Hey, this is Marlon from MarlonMacPherson.com and in this video, I'm gonna talk about what to do if WooCommerce disappears from your WordPress dashboard spontaneously. You've had it there and it's just gone. It can be a big problem to have if you have transactions going through the site, you're likely to lose money and also it can damage your reputation as well if visitors are going to the site and they're just greeted with a broken site. So we need to get that sorted as soon as possible. Now, the situation for me is that um, it's something that I've never come across. Well, I hadn't come across until recently when one of my clients contacted me for some help and I basically had a look for them and saw that they had a critical error on their site. They managed to log into the site and get access to the dashboard and realize that there were a bunch, there were a bunch of messages saying that WooCommerce is missing. I'll show you how to fix the problem, first of all, in this video. And I'll talk about the likely cause towards the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. And um, hopefully you won't have to deal with this, but if it does happen, you can actually get, um, get it sorted pretty straightforwardly. Okay, so here I am in the dashboard of WordPress on one of my demo sites and I'm going to use this to demonstrate the problem and show you the fix as well. Um, if we go to the plugins section of this site, there are full plugins installed already, including WooCommerce and also Stripe gateway for WooCommerce. So that relies on WooCommerce itself. I haven't got any products or anything set up. This is literally just the plugin being installed just so I can show you the problem. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video, break the site to show you the error, and then I'll come back and show you how to fix it. All right, so right now the site is broken, essentially, so you may see an error message on the front end, or if you try to access your shop page or a product page or something of that nature, it will not work because guess what? WooCommerce is actually missing. And you can see this message up here at the top of the dashboard saying Stripe requires WooCommerce to be installed and active, but you know, it's not finding it. So it's giving us that message there. And if we come down to plugins, it's missing. It's actually missing from the menu area here too. But I'll just show you that the plugin is actually no longer in the plugins list. So the first thing you probably want to do is go and try to install it. So we'll go to add new. And we'll just search for WooCommerce here. And you can see here, it says, okay, it's available for us to install. Let's go ahead and click install now and see what happens. And lo and behold, you can't install it. It's failed because it says here, destination folder already exists. So somewhere, somehow it's recognizing that there's a folder already in the location that is trying to install WooCommerce. Um, now this is where you run into problems because how do you know where this folder is that it's talking about and how to fix that and how to get it installed because ideally you wanna install WooCommerce, right? So normally what happens is that your plugins and all the files for your website are installed on your server in a location that you probably don't have access to if you're not running your site yourself and if you don't know how to access your site files. The backend of WordPress is just showing you the actual menu items and things like that to manage the site, but the actual files are stored on your server. So normally you'd need to log into the server and they may have a file browser that you can go through to see all your files. And then you can locate your plugins folder and find where this folder that it's talking about is located. Another way you could get into the files is via FTP, which is a little bit more technical as well to connect up to the server. But for most people that's inaccessible. So. To do that, you can do it from the back end of WordPress here by installing a plugin called WP File Manager, which I've already got installed. You would just need to search in the plugins repository. I'll just do that now and just type in File Manager. And you can see I've already got, in, got it installed. It's the first result here by just typing in File and um, go ahead and install that. I've already got it, got it installed and active. So it's down here in my menu items. So I just wanna access the files by clicking on that menu item and lo and behold, I can see a list of folders and so on. So essentially it's a file browser for those exact same files that are stored on the server. You have to be real careful not to click on and delete anything that's in here that could be critical. Well, I think everything is really essential or critical to the site if you come in here and mess about. So you need to know specifically what you're doing. So on the left-hand side here, there are three groups or three folders um, which contain various files pertaining to WordPress. 
So you have the WP admin, WP content, WP includes. These are dashes in between WP and the name. Um, you want the WP content folder. This is where your plugins folder is going to be located. And what we want to do is go in here and delete the WooCommerce folder that it's recognizing. But before we delete it, let's really have a look at what's happening. So we have like all these plugins installed, all four plugins installed here that I showed you earlier. And normally inside a plugins folder, if I just do it from this end here, inside a plugins folder, you have many folders and files. As you can see for, for this one here, we have at least three, six folders and a few different files. And um, that's what it would normally look like. If we look at the WooCommerce folder, however, we literally have one folder. And this is what I was greeted with when I logged into this client's site. And normally WooCommerce has even a lot more files or folders than the one that I showed you before with that plugin. So somehow those folders or files got deleted. And what we need to do is to replace this. So this folder here called WooCommerce is what is being recognized and we need to get rid of it. So we can, Rename it for a start by right click, right clicking and just saying rename. And then we can put something in front of it. I normally just put an X in front of it just to change the name. So now it's not called WooCommerce. It's got X in front of the name. Uh, so you can do that or you can just right click and delete the file completely, which I'll just leave it there as an example. And if we now go back to, I'll just do this in another tab, the plugins um, section of this website we can try and install WooCommerce again, and now it should work. So let's try install now. And voila, it's installed. We just need to activate it. And now we've got WooCommerce back here and everything should just work as normal. Your products or anything that you've saved I actually didn't set up WooCommerce in this case anyway, but you can see it's actually working. Anything that you've got set up in terms of your product and so on, those things are being stored in your database. So customer details and so on. You don't need to worry about losing those because they're not actually part of those files that we just saw that went missing, okay? If we just come over to here on this site and have a look again at the plugins folder, we'll just um, refresh this actually. And now you can see that we have a WooCommerce folder here. And if we click on that, you'll see all the folders and files now back where they should be. So that's how you would actually get around the failure of um, the installation in the first place. But why is it that WooCommerce got deleted or the files got deleted from the plugins area here? Now this can apply to any plugin, by the way, it's not just WooCommerce. I think I might have mentioned that before. Um, so if this happens, this is the same exact process that you would follow. But why is it that this happened? Now, after speaking to some of my tech colleagues and they've checked over the site for me, they've said that, look, the site's clean. There's no malware or anything like that because this could be an issue where something or someone's gotten into the site some kind of malicious code has gotten into the site that's executed and it's deleted something. That wasn't the case because these sites that I help my clients manage and so on, these are secure. And um, basically it's not impossible, but it's unlikely that it would be malware. We concluded that due to some updates that were carried out, somehow the updates broke the site and managed to delete the files that were in here. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that WooCommerce was the problem or the plugin specifically that you you have the issue with is the problem. It could just mean that the update process somehow didn't complete and it just um, ended up having an error and basically deleting those files. Because what happens is that I would imagine that when the updates are taking place to a particular plugin, they actually replace these files in this folder here. So they probably delete them and then add new files in with the newer version of that plugin. And therefore, if the plugin or if the process got stuck rather, then it could have started and basically not replace those files. And that's where you end up with this issue. How do you prevent this from happening? How do you prevent your site from being broken or maybe uh, you can't exactly prevent it because you just don't know when things are going to get stuck or if this issue is going to come up again. So the best thing that you can do is to be prepared by having backups, making sure that you back up before you update the site. 
And if anything was to go wrong, you can revert back to that backup very quickly. Also, always check, especially with uh, e-commerce websites, always check visually and test your pages. So check your home page, check your shop page, check a product page. And if you're a site owner, make sure you regularly test your checkouts, make sure you test your forms, all of these things, because at any point something could be broken and you don't realize that it's happened. But either way, technology, it, it is what it is. Any site can break with any one of these situations here. So knowing how to really come out of it is, is really the, the main thing and how to mitigate against um, these types of problems and get them solved as soon as possible. Now, if this video has helped you, hit the like button to encourage more content like this on YouTube, as well as if you need some help with your online content strategy or your website strategy, head over to marlonmatpherson.com and see how I can help. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you in the next one.